Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. Today we're going to be discussing the basics of Bitcoin transaction scripting. In Bitcoin, there's no hard-coded protocol for how money is sent from one person to another. Rather, there's a special scripting language that can be used to set conditions for allowing a user to spend the money that somebody sent them in a future transaction. This language is called script. So what is script? Well, first of all, script is Turing incomplete. That means that this special language has no facilities for looping or jumping around to other sections of code. Every command in a Bitcoin script is executed in a linear fashion every single time. So if you're familiar with a language like C++ or Python that has for loops, or even something more complex like assembly that has jump commands, Bitcoin scripts don't have this available to them. They always execute in the same order. Now this was a decision that was made by Bitcoin developers to prevent uh, locking up the network with nodes trying to process transactions that might have something like an infinite loop. Script is also stack based. So with languages that you might be familiar with such as C++, you can create variables to store data. Well, with script, data can only be pushed or popped off of a central stack uh, that controls the execution of this program. If you're not familiar with stacks, this is a pretty popular and important computer science uh, topic and data structure that you should know. Uh, so there's lots of great tutorials out there on the web that can help you understand how stacks work. So what makes up a script? First, there's an unlocking script. This script is generated by the wallet that wants to spend some of the user's Bitcoin balance. And this script is designed to satisfy the locking condition set by this locking script that we're going to talk about next. So the next thing again is what's called a locking script. This is a condition set on the UTXO or unspent transaction output that the, wa uh, that the wallet user holds uh, as part of their Bitcoin balance. So this condition was actually set by the previous sender. So if Alice sent Bob some amount of Bitcoin, uh, Alice's transaction to Bob sets the locking condition on the unspent transaction output that Bob owns. The unlocking script is put together by Bob's wallet in order to satisfy that locking condition. When the locking condition is satisfied by Bob's wallet, he has proven to the Bitcoin network that he is in fact the rightful owner of the unspent transaction output and the Bitcoin that Alice sent to him. So when we talk about the script itself, if the script evaluates to true at the end of the script, so true is the last item left on the stack when the script execution finishes, that proves to the network that Bob is indeed the rightful owner of the unspent transaction output that Alice sent to him. And this means it's a valid transaction. So now let's talk a little bit about what scripts actually look like. The most common script type in the Bitcoin world is called the pay to public key hash or P2PKH script. With this script, the uh, unlocking script and locking script always sort of have the same structure to them. The unlocking script that is set by Bob's wallets uh, in order for him to prove that he owns a UTXO always has a signature, a digital signature, uh, formed with Bob's private key and data about the transaction that's called the message, and Bob's public key. Now it's important to note that the public key is not the exact same thing as the user's address. So the private key is used to uh, generate the public key uh, using elliptic curve uh, cryptography. And the address is sort of a um, cryptographically modified version of the public key. It goes through some hashes and some checksums. Uh, so that's a little bit easier to deal with for end users than the public key itself but we actually use the raw public key data here. Now the locking script set by Alice's unspent transaction output has the following operations. It has op dupe, 
which is to duplicate a, an item on the stack, op hash 160, the public key hash of Bob's public key, op equal verify, and op check sig. Now we're going to get a little bit more into what these operators actually mean when we walk through the execution of this script. So let's do that now. Let's say uh, we have, uh, again, a script where uh, Bob now wants to send Mike some amount of Bitcoin, and he needs to unlock the unspent transaction output left from Alice's transaction to Bob. So Bob's wallet generates the signature and public key, and the Bitcoin uh, network, the node validating this transaction, will put the unlocking script before the locking script. So they're kind of concatenated together. Uh, it turns out that they actually execute on two different stacks now for security reasons, but the general idea is that the unlocking script goes before the locking script to form the actual script that's going to execute. So here on the left we have our stack, and here on the right we're going to show every operation in order for this script. So starting out, the first item in our script is the signature data. Now the script language, since it just sees an actual hard-coded value here, all it's going to do is push that signature onto the top of the stack. So the first item is sig, and the signature is pushed onto the top of the stack. The next item in the script is the public key. Again, this is a constant value, and so this is going to be pushed onto the top of the stack. Now we get to the locking script part of the script, and the first thing that we see is op dupe, or duplication. So all this operator does is takes the existing item at the top of the stack, which is pub key, and duplicates it and pushes that value onto the top of the stack. So now our stack has pub key, pub key, and signature from top down. When we encounter op hash 160, it takes the top item on the stack, which is a copy of Bob's public key, and runs it through the hash 160 algorithm. And uh, this is actually done using both SHA and the RIPEMD 160 uh, hash. So the value is first hashed using SHA 265, or 256 rather, and then run through uh, write MD160 and push back onto the stack. The next value is again a constant value, which is the public key hash provided by the locking script. Now this value is pushed onto the stack and we have public key hash, public key hash, pub key, and sig from top down. The next operator is op equal verify. Now what this does is it pops the top two items off of the stack, so they're completely removed from the execution stack. The values are compared. If the values are equal, the execution of the script simply continues. No data is pushed back onto the stack from this operation. However, if these two values, the two public key hashes, are not equal, it will uh, give an error return code and the execution of the script will stop. So that means that this, uh, this script, this transaction is not valid. Bob can't prove that he's the rightful owner of the unspent transaction output, so it can't be used. But let's say you know everything checks out, uh, these public key hashes do match. We move on to the final operator, which is op check sig. Now what this does is it takes the signature and the public key and verifies that this is in fact a valid uh, digital signature using elliptic curve uh, digital si signature algorithms. So the signature again is signed by Bob's private key, uh, proving that he owns this Bitcoin, or owns the Bitcoin address rather. And uh, this can be proven by somebody with only the public key and the message data. So this digital signature algorithm allows you to prove ownership of some data, uh, prove that you did in fact sign a message with your private key without having to give anybody else the private key to verify. Otherwise, it wouldn't be private. If op check sig is, uh, validates the signature, it pushes true back onto the stack. 
So this is the end of our script execution. And now what we've done is since this script has executed and all of this sort of cryptographic uh, stuff going on in the script has uh, come out correct, we end with true on the stack. This means in the context of Bitcoin uh, and Bitcoin transactions that Bob was able to prove that he owns the Bitcoin sent to him by Alice in a previous transaction. Again, there's an unspent transaction output that's created by Alice's transaction uh, when she sent some Bitcoin to Bob. And he is now able to prove that he's the owner of that, the rightful owner based on his private key and his address, and is able to use that as an input to his new transaction to Mike. So this has been a bit of a technical look at how Bitcoin scripting works and what a basic Bitcoin transaction looks like in terms of scripting. As always, there's a text article that accompanies this video on the website. Uh, it goes through the same basic pay to public key hash script step by step. So you might find it uh, useful to accompany this video and help you understand this better. As always, Thank you very much for your time. I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching.